Hello friends. So now we are going to discuss about Newton's second law. Actually, <coughs> Newton's second law is a, not a new thing. Rather, it can say just a new way to extend Newton's first law because scientists today believe that Newton's say first law, second law, third law, they are not actually different laws. They are actually quite correlated among themselves. So, but still, since it's on our syllabus and it's better to study in different views, so we will study Newton's second law. So, before studying that, uh, first we must be knowing what is momentum. a very general question which is being asked in different interviews that uh, which is the most intrinsic property of a body either its momentum or its mass and different scientists have their different views but we will not go in such kind of scientific details because ultimately we have to solve problems and we just need to understand its application in solving different uh, object bodies so momentum or simple definition P is equal to mv so whatever is the direction of velocity, that will be the direction of momentum. But you can imagine that suppose a ball, a simple 1 kg ball or a half a kg ball is coming at a speed of 100 meter per second or 10 kilometer per hour, whatever. Then that speed multiplied by its mass gives momentum. And suppose instead of a ball there is a truck coming at the same speed. So ultimately mass of truck is greater than mass of ball. So ultimately the momentum of truck will be much higher. When I was discussing Newton's first law, then I gave an example of a heavy man. Suppose a heavy man is running on a track and you are asked to go and stop him. Then just compare it with the light man, mass of heavy man and then momentum of heavy man h and velocity and momentum of light man, mass of light man into p. Mass of H is greater than mass of light man. So ultimately, if both are coming with the same velocity, a heavy man and a light man, then since mass of heavy man is greater than mass of light man, so momentum of heavy man will be greater than momentum of light man. And you, your task is to stop him. Now what will happen? Suppose it took us Five seconds. Five seconds to stop him totally. So stop him totally means the first thing under whose observation we are talking about. So suppose I myself is the observer. So in my observation, heavy man as well as light man has the velocity v, both v, p. And I went there. I took five seconds to stop the heavy man as well as to stop the light man. From 5 seconds I mean that at time t is equal to 0 velocity is v and at time t is equal to 5 velocity is 0. In the moment I touched one of them from that moment till their velocity became 0 it took 5 seconds. So what will say? The final momentum, this is the initial momentum, say case 1, and final momentum P of H will be 0 as well as P of the light mass will also be 0. Because ultimately the velocity of both the person went to 0. So you can see here that from PH of value MHV this came out to 0, and from MLV this also came out to 0. So in which case the change is larger? Obviously, since momentum of H is greater than momentum of L, so in the case of heavy man, the change is larger. So delta momentum for heavy man is greater than delta momentum for light man. And this momentum change took place in same amount of time. So physically if we say, we see this observation.
observation what will happen uh, suppose when i went there to stop a light van i may require a bit but when i will be stopping a heavy man i would require require a lot or may depending on how much mass that man is carrying because when i was stopping that man what i was doing as per rules for stop i was trying to tone down his state of motion into his state of rest as per my observation i am the observer and since i am at rest i can be attributed as inertial frame so in my observation the momentum of heavy man got reduced down to zero and momentum of light man also got reduced down to zero so change of momentum for heavy man was larger than change of momentum for light man and since their state of motion turn into a state of rest then it has to be sure from newton's first law that there must be a force and who was the agent applying the force it was the person me who was applying a force so i applied a force which took same time to reduce down the momentum of heavy man as ph to zero which came out to delta ph delta ph it just means ph minus zero so ultimately this is actually equal to ph only and similarly this is ph so it, it took same amount of time so what physics can be conclude from here it is very obvious that we must be applying more force on heavy man than the force which we are applying on light man because we took constant time in the stopping heavy man as well as light man so when we took same time then change of momentum was difference so change of momentum was different it means we applied different force had we been applying same force on both of them then its physics in intuition that from where we can say that time taken in case of heavy man must be larger but it did not happen we applied we used same amount of time it means we applied more force to stop the heavy man and from newton's third law you can see the conclusion that in this case i will be thrown away more distance than in this case when we come to newton's third law that every action has equal and opposite reaction then we will deal that so from here we can say that force applied on h was greater than force applied on light man so the conclusion from which this experimental observation we can conclude is that force is basically rate of change of momentum mind it here please i am saying rate of change of momentum means per second how much momentum is changing i give you another example in cricket match when a fast bowler is bowling keeper tries to stand uh, at a larger distance than the from the main batsman like in the case of a spinner and you will observe that when he catches the ball in his gloves he tries to traces his back his hand a bit backwards why suppose the ball comes and he catches it straight away then what happens ball has a speed say around 100 km per hour it means it has momentum whatever the mass of the ball will be 1 kg or 1.2 kg that multiplied by 100 is its momentum just a time before the ball came into the gloves of the wicket keeper its momentum was something like 1.2 into say 100 km per hour it means around 120 and just in the next moment when the ball was in his gloves if he did not trace his hand backwards if he just caught the ball right away in his hand then just at that moment the momentum become it becomes zero it means the change in momentum delta p like here will be what 120 minus zero it means 120 change in momentum will be 
one twin. Because we did not allow the time. So just at the next moment, change momentum is 120, and suppose maybe it took one second. So from this definition, force will come out to be 120 divided by 1. It's a very high amount of force, 120 Newton. Now just imagine if he traces back his hand a bit and it took him say 3 seconds then this time t which is in the denominator because force is rate of change of momentum it means force is del p by del t so if this del t is 3 seconds if he takes his hand backwards then this force will become 120 by 3 straight away it gets 1 third so in order to protect his hand from being broken away because if this much amount of force will act on his hand his bones may break so in order to protect himself he traces his hand a bit back so that it takes some time to momentum get zero from a higher value such that the force applied on his hand will be nullified or it will be quite low ultimately in this example Newton's third law also plays its role because what is happening? The wicket keeper is trying to stop the ball. It means the wicket keeper is applying a force on the ball, right? At the same time, the ball is also applying a force on the wicket keeper's hand. So it will break in this case only when the force is being applied from the ball to the wicket keeper's hand. So as I was saying earlier that these Newton's first law, second law, third law, these are generally taught or studied in different modes just to understand them. Rather, if you see in a broader perspective, these are all laws and other also laws, the law of energy, conservation of energy and all which came into play. Ultimately, we will see the common point in which we all are related. And uh, that is actually the best way to read physics at this level because if you try to take a holistic approach that all the chapters are being interlinked, then it would be quite easy to grasp everything in mind, all the concept and it would become very easy to solve problems in competitions. So I'm just trying to uh, tell you because just, just try to take a habit that you try to correlate the chapters, correlate different laws, whatever you will study, so that the life becomes easier in that. So coming point back to this point, so this force becomes one third with this time. So force is del P by del T. So this is actually Newton's second law, and ultimately it results into there is no point in going explaining the derivation. Force is equal to m into a. Because what is del p? Del p is just your m into del v by del t. And from kinematics, we know that just del v by del t is a. It can be if we go into proper derivation, then uh, we have to first take it m del v del t. Plus, we have to make it V del M by del D. Because as per this syllabus, this value will be 0. Because mass is not going to change in our convention. In up to our level, mass is not going to change. So it's very simple F del P by del T that can be attributed as M into del V by del T. And del V by del T is nothing but the acceleration, the rate of change of velocity, which you must have studied in the chapter of kinematics. So this is Newton's second law. It's just another way of expressing Newton's first law also. So Newton's and also Newton's third law. So I guess uh, there is a Newton's third law portion is also permitted here because Newton's third law is very simple among them all that every action has equal and opposite reaction. If you apply a force on a body on an object, then that object will also apply same amount of force back on you but just its direction will be opposite now uh, I will try to give you another example so that things become even more clear from there that it is generally said that if you are trying to step down from a moving bus and you are jumping from a moving bus which is moving say suppose at a speed of 30 km per hour then first of all you just 
jump in the same direction in which the bus is going. You jump parallel to the bus and also do not stop instantaneously. Rather, you take a more few steps. Now the question is why? The reason is, let's suppose when the person is standing inside a bus, at bus gate, suppose you are standing and you are just in a mood to jump, that time the momentum you are carrying, the momentum is your mass into velocity of bus. Because if you are inside bus, then bus's velocity is your velocity. Now, as soon as you jump, then what happens? You lose the contact from bus. Now you lose the contact from bus, but your initial velocity will be what? The velocity which you had when you were just at the point when you were losing the contact on the bus. If you jump in the same direction, and suppose you stand here, and just do not move, then what happens? Suppose it took you just one second from this bus's gate to the ground. Then what will happen? Similar what we saw in the case of ticket keeper, that the change in momentum will be final momentum minus initial momentum. And what is final momentum? That is zero minus mv. And it, if it took just one second, then force will be del P by del T and del T is 1. So force will be just minus mv. So who is applying this force minus mv? This force is being applied from ground on the object, on the person A. So this force is minus mv. The minus sign comes because in our convention, this is plus. Because the bus is moving in this direction and we are taking this velocity V plus. So this is plus and this is minus. So if minus sign is there, it means the direction of force applied from earth on the object A is this. Opposite. So this was the force in minus mv. Now suppose if in the second case, the person does not stop. Rather he takes a few steps and then he stops. So definitely if he is taking a few steps, then it means it will take him around 4 to 5 seconds or say 4 seconds. But ultimately the final momentum is going to be 0 and initial momentum is mv. So in that case, say suppose this is the force in the first case, then the force in the second case would be del p is our same minus mv, but this time del t will be 4. So we can see that what is happening very clearly that force is getting reduced four times it got reduced it means the priority of your knee bone to be fractured is four times less rather than in the case first so it is advised that you take a few steps because the force magnitude will be reduced direction will be same negative direction but force magnitude will be reduced because the change in momentum is going to be same, your initial and final momentum, momentum are same, but your time will be different, so force magnitude will get reduced. Now just imagine that instead of stepping down in parallel direction, had he been stepping down in opposite direction, then what would happen? In that case, step down in this direction. So in that case, final momentum, the change in momentum will be final momentum minus initial momentum. So as he is moving in this direction, as soon as he touches the ground, say even if he does not stop, he has some speed. So this will be minus of m into, just for easy if you are taking the velocity as 4 and this velocity u as 3. So minus of m into 2 minus m into 4. Ultimately it comes to be minus 6m. And ultimately if it is if he stops, then it will become 0. And if it is not a stop, it's just at the point he hits the ground here. And it took him say one second. 
it jumps from the bus and it hits the ground and it took him one second and at that time his velocity is 2m in this direction so that's why we are taking this minus sign here because that is in this direction so minus 2m minus into plus minus into plus 4m it gives minus 6m so ultimately del p is minus 6m by 1 in the previous case del p was minus if we take 4 to minus 4m so what we can see that rather I should write here del f minus 6m by 1 and del f also be here del f case 1 del f case 2 minus 4m by 1 so this is the case when he jumps in the same direction this is the case when he jumps in the opposite direction so what we are saying that more force is being applied so more force is being applied if you jump in the opposite direction that's why it is advised that please jump in the same direction and try to take a few steps the previous example which we did so from Newton's second law these all things are based on Newton's laws this is all advices and all traffic rules or whatever so this is the application of Newton's laws that from here we can deduce and we can show it numerically that why such things are advised in our day to day life so we will use this simple intuition in our to solve even some more tricky problems so as per now i hope that uh, newton's laws will become will be clear and uh, from here only we can reduce that newton's third law is also applicable here because if this person is applying a force on the ground by jumping on ground that's why ground is applying a force on it which is helping to reduce its momentum and to other subsequent results but in our next session, we will again discuss Newton's third law and then we will try to enter inside the way to solve Newton's problem and the way of solving free body diagram. That's it.